welcome. Well, sunny Saturday morning. Well, Saturday midday. Well, it's still morning to me. <laughs> anyway, so I have the uh, ZX Spectrum on. I have the back bit, which is what I want to test on it today. And uh, also, I've got um, our old sit box, uh, new one still in production. Uh, that also the Div MMC here, the Enjoy one. Now these two I have here because I'm going to test a couple of things out. Um, in a little bit of a comparison, they all do different things, but I want to compare them with regards to the the back bit and my experience with them all. PCBWay have now become a one-stop solution. Other than doing high quality PCB boards, they now do CNC services as well as 3D printing. If like myself you're into doing electronics projects and require PCBs, then do check out their services on their website. So as you saw in the last video, I'd um, used the back bit on the Commodore 64 and I even um, tested the back set out, which uh, Evie kindly sent me. If you wish to watch that video, I've linked it in the description below or the letter I there. Today, of course, I'm going to use the, um, the ZX Spectrum adapter, which, is, uh, which has a Kempston port at the top of it as well. So literally all it is, is you put the back bit on top of here be nice if it would have two joysticks but then you know it's not that big of a deal because I think most just use one uh, a lot use keyboard and not only that you can get these joystick adapters here they're modern made I got this from Lotharic when I ordered the accelerator for my Amiga and uh, a few other goodies I think the also the um, incognito for my Atari 800 um, so yeah that you can just literally connect this onto this and just daisy chain it if it goes in it will go in it's just a little stick <laughs> there you go because it's just brand new all right so yeah you can just do that that's just a joystick adapter and then that will you know work to the work as a second so yeah angry space invader one and it lights up <laughs> now i also have the div ide which i which i'm still yet to cover but I'll do that in a separate video because that's quite, it seems like quite a different beast. So, you know, for now I will concentrate on the back bit and just to kind of see a few things, test a few things, the other two, the WMMC and of course uh, the sit box. Okay. And simple as that, you get the back bit screen here. And it's going through the, so I was messing with it earlier on. I'm testing it because I had to actually update the firmware up to you know 1.5 uh, it was 1.0 before and it was like obviously it didn't work at all but yeah now everything is uh, perfect I was just testing it earlier on well last night there are I'm just wondering which files it supports which file formats it's worth because with ZX Spectrum, just like Commodore 64, there are TAP files, which are tape files. There are TZX, which I think are possibly fast load tape files, but I know there are tape files of some sort. There are Z80s, which are ROMs, and um, there's other, I almost said LZX, but that's an Amiga archive format. <laughs> A TZX. <laughs> that's it. But there's also TADs. I don't know what they are. I'm not too familiar on Spectrum as I haven't dabbled with it as much as I have with um, C64 and Amiga, even though we had um, the 48k rubber key one. Also, I wish to test SCRs. Oh, they're not for, okay. Now one thing which I do like what Evie's done is whatever file format is not supported, the file name will appear in red here. So of course you cannot, you know, invalid format. So this is much easier way of testing. So let's, uh, I don't know what TAD is. No, it doesn't support. TAPS, of course, yes it does. TZX, no, TZX it doesn't. Okay, Z80s, which are ROMs, you'd, ex you'd expect it to. No, it doesn't, there's a TAP stuck in there. I'm actually surprised by the Z80. I thought, you know, since it being a cartridge, that it support um, the ROMs, but so yeah, it supports taps, 
At least for now. I don't know what the plans are for the future. So let's connect my trusty zipstick in here. My favorite. Ooh, I control the menu with the zipstick. There you go. This makes things much easier. Up, down for single files. And then left, right for pages. So, you know, you can get down to the other letters much quickly. Intuitive, I love it. Simple, it's perfect. Let's just pick this one. Okay, so, Kempston, of course. And let's see where it's dark again. Now, the one thing I remember about these um, toast tracks, I've, ooh, I had two of them. I'd, ooh. I two of them, I'd um, restored both of them. If you haven't watched that series, I'll link it again in the description below. But one thing I noticed is the... For goodness sake, this is really hard. <laughs> right, there we go. Right, the AY sound. <gasps> no! The AY sound. For goodness sake. These games back then were really hard. <laughs> there we go. No. So we'll go the other way. Hello. Right, yeah. I was gonna say the AY sound is much more quieter than the. Uh... Oh no, wait. I need to get that, don't I? No, 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 no! Don't jump up, please. I miss this other thing. So, what I did was, I did a mod which put a potentiometer, or a little variable resistor, sorry, inside uh, the spectrum itself, so you can adjust between the um, the actual AY and the spectrum sounds, the, the sounds itself, the sound tracks. Because it was just so much of a difference, and that was on both toast tracks. Oh, for goodness sake. Yes, I haven't played this game much. <laughs> oh no. I shouldn't... There's no way to stop him from jumping. Okay, I need the air. Okay, maybe not gonna collect that. Because they make him drunk on the, the actual controls. I remember... Um, the controls just reverse. I think I've got no choice he here. <laughs> ah, no, no. Sometimes the controls reverse. Sometimes he just starts walking forward. He's cute. It just looks like a little hamster. Or a little... hamstery raffy thing. <laughs> okay. No. No. to get down without... Oh, there we go. Oh, right, okay. You have to... Okay. <laughs> you have to really know the game. But this music, uh, I believe by Ben Daglish, it's an earworm. Oh my goodness. I'm used to the uh, C64 rendition of the of this track, but I don't think I played the game in the C64. It's just like sit, collecting sins and stuff. That's what I do. Anyway, let's try another one, which I know didn't work, and I think it's because I didn't know how to actually. Um, it's the New Zealand story, so I wanted to see what it's like on the, the spectrum. I've not played it. But I think it just it, it asks for different keys. Fire up down. So you press fire, right? And it searches for so it's like I think it's asking you to press play on the tape. So I've noticed all these press play ones. I don't know what to do if the back bit supports this or not, you know, the multi-load games. So this is like things like this, 
things like Pang, which I was trying to play earlier on. Yeah, like start tape and press fire. So, I want to start tape. <laughs> so I think the tape, so it works with taps, but I'm not sure about this, these type of games and what to do with them. If I'm, unless I'm missing something, please comment below. See what Bald Blaster's like on this? Yeah, it doesn't like that. <laughs> okay, you know something? Some of these games, right? I've noticed. Some of the actual files themselves are good. Because this, there was two um, Batman the movies in this list. Stupid thing. There was two Batman the movies in this list, right? And the first one didn't work, this one worked. So sometimes, you know, I don't think it's all always about the back bit. Clearly this one works. Yeah. You know what I mean? The music is still quiet. I need to. I think I may need to adjust even more. This is after adjustments. Yeah. Giving as the Amigo C64 version, it's actually uh, it feels a bit more difficult. I have to say one thing in the C64 version of this: the um, actual enemies, these idiots firing at you and throwing bombs at you, they're uh, actually they're, they're stupid. On the Amiga version, they're a bit more intelligent. They uh, they like to follow you a bit. And in this one, they seem to be intelligent also. They follow you a bit and they fire up and down. C64 version, they actually, they just, they, they just fire you if, they, if you go in front of them. And it's just idiot. All right, so. I do like this version of it though. So it feels like I'm playing on some sort of LCD, mini LCD game or something like this. Cause the, this is what the graphics just look like. on Spectrum. Is it Kempston? Ooh. Not a bad rendition of this track. Just the thing, I, I play Adam's Family for this track. <laughs> it's just quirky, I like it. This is the first time I have seen Adam's Family on because I played this a lot on the Amiga. And I did play it on the Mega Drive back then as well, briefly. Oh my god. Feels like a totally different game though. And there's still that except that there's 
still some elements of it that are the same, like the skittiness of Gomez when he's frustrating again. I don't like this version. Yeah, okay, whatever. I'm going to play something like Arcadia. It's any key to begin. Oh, this doesn't have... Um... That is so noisy. I have to turn the volume down. It's a proper 16 k again. It's one of those games that looks really easy, right? But it's so difficult. Well, maybe not so difficult. So there's a technique in doing it. You got, you got games like this, which are classics. It's just simple, but... I love them. There's one someone did on the... Ooh, C64. Thank you, um, bad collision detection. <laughs> little fluffy aliens. Oh. oh, you idiot. Two things that always confuse me about the spectrum. Why no LED and why no power switch? It's so annoying. <laughs> it's literally no power. I mean, come on. Power switch on a computer. I don't think it would cost that much more for like a simple LED in the power switch. I'm gonna just try the div MMC. I'll put the exact same games, the exact same files that is on this SD card. And I wanna show you what the issue I have with it. I do like it and how it works and operates and stuff, that's all fine. But there's just an issue with it which really is important to me. Now, I don't know since then, I haven't like updated any firmware, if there's been any or anything like that. I love the look of it, I love the fact that there's like a dual joystick port and you know it has options and stuff, but there's just the short file name thing about it really bugs. So you get this nice intro screen. Okay, so the file names, and not only that, the, the white text on black background. It gets me. Um, I am dyslexic and I have airline syndrome, which I cannot like properly see certain color combinations. A certain uh, I cannot read text with certain color combinations. This is one of them. White text on black background. It's okay if it's like a little gray or if it's on paper. It's not so bad as long as this. If there's too much contrast between the background and the text, my eyes just struggle to see it. So you have a body here. Let's just. On. What is this? I've never played it, I've just randomly put it on. It feels like. Ya al final de mi vida. It's the end of my life. Okay, this seems to be like an adventure game, which to be honest, I'm not so much into them. Move on. That's my issue with, with this. Anyway, that's what I wanted to show. Um, let's see what. It works with tab. Let's see if it works. What other files? Uh, file. Um... Yep, doesn't look like it likes TZX. Uh, SCRs. Does it work with that? 
Yeah, I guess it does. But it does it straight away rather than load it up like the set box does. So the SCRs are basically just pictures. Let's work with Z80s. Yes, it works with Z80. This is like a 16K game. It's one thing, the um, the sound of the ZX Spectrum, I'm talking about the the, the inner speaker, not the AY. I will kind of like the sound of the AY. But the inner speaker, Freaking shoot, you idiot. Normally not that bad at this thing. The sound of the actual beeper can be quite invasive. Again, it's, it's much louder than the AY. Now this basically does TAP files and TZX files. So let's take it to TAP 1 to 8. Um, I've copied, yeah, as I said, exactly the same things in all three of these. Okay, so use for the SID box, I just need to take the um, DivMMC out and just put a standard joystick adapter in here. Space Invader 1. There you go. So you turn the Spectrum on and the Space Invader becomes angry. Very angry actually, it's quite bright that. <laughs> One thing I like is you know how Wayne's programmed the sit box is it knows what it's doing. So it's like it's quite accurate um tape emulation and I'm so glad this stereo cable actually works. Only thing is it's just like old school, you have to wait through the logic sequence. Because it's like it's acting as a tape emulator. Alright, so with games like this that are multi load, when it stops at a certain point, you're supposed to um, stop the tape. <laughs> In this case, pause the, um, the sit box. Like here. Now, I paused the sit box. It did play a little bit. <laughs> right, okay. Um, but I paused it or I stopped the tape. Up, down, right, left. So you've done that. Now press fire to play. Right? Now it's. Oh, okay. I think I stopped it a bit late, so it's getting confused. Fortunately, on the sit box, I cannot rewind the tape, and um, yeah, I don't think Wayne. I mean, I don't remember Wayne implementing that. So yeah, Wayne. For the Sidbox um, 5 that we're doing now, uh, I think a little bit of a being able to like rewind the tape would be a good idea. <laughs> right, take two. So this time I stopped it in time. So let's uh, redefine the keys again. Fire, up, down, right, left. And then you press fire to play and it asks to play the tape again. There we go. So, something, I think these kind of games, I could not get working on the back bit, unfortunately. But, you know, maybe I'm missing something. Maybe there's a certain sequence which I don't know about. You know, it could be anything like that. There we go, finally loaded. This took a lot of loading, to be honest. What the freak already? I barely did anything. Where's the savey? Where's that savey guy? Where's the when you supposed to ah, save? No freak. <gasps> no. Oh my god, this is not so forgiving. 
Oh, the frame rate's really bad on this. This game. The sad part of it, I mean. Does the fr I'm wondering if the fan thing works on this version. Is there a fan on this? There's no fan. Just a thing. Considering Spectrum has zero scrolling. Right. <laughs> Spectrum has zero scrolling capabilities. And no sprites. Oh no! I blew up the stupid balloon. It's it's actually quite a good I'm just daydreaming then. It's actually quite a good effort. But if it's playable, I don't know, my eyes are certainly feeling it. I mean then again it is pretty difficult gameplay. Freak, go away. Oh, I saved him. So I kind of made my point about the um, the multi-load game. <laughs> it took ages to load, I won't lie. And I think there's more to it, like if you... I don't know, has it loaded the entire game? Or I think it will, it's got more to load because there's a progress bar on the Sid box itself here. And it's not completely done. So I think this is a big game. Okay, so let's... Uh, I'm going to show you the SCRs on this. Because obviously the SCRs did... Uh, load up on the div MMC, but you didn't have the same feeling as this, <laughs> as the um, set box. So here, let's um, do the tech loader. Ms. Malaman intro. This just reminds me of a dot matrix printer. I always say that, but the way the spectrum actually um, sounds and loads the games, uh, sorry, the images. It just reminds me of a dot matrix printer. And it's doing it on the actual screen of the sit box also at the same time. There we go. <laughs> That's how I did my intro for this uh, for the spectrum section. Some of these I don't remember what they are. Oops. Ah, uh, no. Again, okay, doing it here. Ah, this is the photograph of my um my workbench plaque thing on the wall on the wall of my workbench. <laughs> One more. <laughs> the zero to seven for bold border colors. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna plug the back bit in once again and then just like, you know, go front with it and back everything up. Uh, yes, it's become nighttime now, so, you know, it's become dark and everything. The angry invader out. And put the uh, back bit back in. I was about to uh, finish off with the um, the back bit and just kind of like um, wrap the video up, right? But the, okay, something's just happened and this has resulted in my poor toast track needing a repair now. I just hope it's not a major issue. Okay, I should have known this and, and um, to be honest, I thought 
I didn't think to check because you know everything has it. Right, so you have, um, right, so if you notice here, on the uh, Spectrum expansion port, there's a notch here, right? Yeah. Now then, everything that connects to this uh, expansion port has a bar or a barrier here, right? It stops you from accidentally inserting it a little bit this way or a little bit that way. It's just not possible, right? So you just have to insert it like this. Um, whether it's with this, whether it's with the div MMC or whether it's anything else, uh, probably the, the um, div IDE also, right? You know, it just doesn't allow you to... The thing is with this, just heads up, yeah, to everyone. This does not have a bar inside the actual back bit. Uh, EV, I think you just need to kind of like put something in here so you don't, because you can actually plug this in a little lopsided, yeah? Now what happened is I just did it smidge and I just caught, I just caught the, um, the actual misalign, yeah? And I think it's shorted something. And I saw some, yeah, magic smoke come out of here. So I'm, I'm thinking it's the regulator that I've just brought, blown. I really hope so. <laughs> I'm a bit apprehensive of connecting this directly. I think I'm gonna connect it with the um, Angry Space Invader first. Can you see here? It stops you connecting uh, this thing here. It stops you connecting something. Um, if you just have something like that in these adapters, yeah, like that. Now, when I put it in, it turns on, right? Yeah, but the thing doesn't come on. Now, I hope I haven't goofed up the um, back bit itself. I mean, the light did come on just then. Yeah, light did come on. But the screen isn't coming on, as in like it's a blank screen now. So I know that there's parts of the spectrum working, so I'm gonna have to repair this now. I just really hope it's nothing major, none of the major chips or anything like this. I hope it's just part of the regulator because I know that, you know, part of the voltage, nine volts goes to, you know, certain things, but then there's a, the regulator itself is actually five volts. It steps it down to five, which goes to the ICs. So it might just be the nine volts going to there, but oh, I don't know. Whatever it is, I, I just hope it's nothing major because I love my <laughs> tall track here and uh, yeah. So heads up, heads up um, all around. I do hope that I can fix that. I just and I hope I haven't goofed up my back bit because um, I do like it a lot and I've you know I enjoy using and I've got so many other systems to try it out on. You know, EV kindly sent me the adapters for a lot of them, uh, a lot of systems which I have, I mean. So anyway, sad ending, but let's hope we can recover from this. Um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, thanks so much for your likes, your shares. Do leave your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to check out my other videos on my back catalog and do subscribe for more. For now, until next time, I will say adios. Thanks so much to all my patrons for supporting my channel, especially to you very kind top tier supporters of mine who deserve an extra special thanks. Rich Garbett, Electronscape, Axel Dominator, Aaron Metcalf, Corey Ostman, Mark Bosak, Starlight Minako, Veronica Explains, and Chris Sebelansky. Have a lovely evening everyone. Until next time, adios! Music